you were telling me um, about the first uh, European that actually went and, and survived and came back from Africa. What was his name again? The French guy? René, René Callier. I'm, I'm going to write it down in the chat. Okay. And um, before him, there's no f European people who... Uh, um, well, so, so the reason I alive. Okay, so the reason I asked this is because, um, as 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 uh, just I was gonna explain, as he was he said it mentioned it earlier, there was like Did they tell us about. Let me see. On the in the chat, you, René Callier. On the René Zoom chat, Callier. and they said okay, that between René Callier, there was only. One people who were not uh, uh, African who reached Timbuktu, and it, his name was Ibn Battuta, uh, one of a famous traveler, uh, very famous in Arabic tradition, because Ibn Battuta he wrote a lot of chronicles that uh, we use in his in history nowadays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, we so I say believe that Ibn Khaldun also uh -huh. is a very is a big liar because Ibn Khaldun wanting to relate the Berbers with the Ar original uh, uh, original um, Arabic people of Yemen, but it's a um, um, it's a, <laughs> a fairy tale. There's no such mm. thing. <laughs> So I, 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 you know, I, I believe, you know, this is a whitewashing image of him. Of course, there was no uh, photographs during this time. This is a drawing. Um, so Auguste René Callier was a French explorer and the first European to return alive from the town of Timbuktu. Callier had been preceded by Timbuktu by British officer Major Gordon Lane, who was murdered in September 1826 on leaving the city. So look, when we talk about Europeans arriving to Africa, right, you guys got to pay attention. This is the first one that actually made it out alive. Say, hey, hey, we can start going over there to colonize There's people over there. They're trying to make deals. So this is the first guy. This is in the 1830s. Right? It says, Calais returned to St. Louis in 1824 with a strong desire to become explorer and visit Timbuktu. In order to avoid some of the difficulties experienced by the early expeditions, he planned to travel along disguised as a Muslim. So he's in the 1700s, 1800s, and he's a he's trying to disguise himself as a Muslim, but he's a, he's look he looks like this white guy right here. Do you think he can disguise himself as a Muslim? If he looked like this, I don't know. It'd be logical. All right. So this is the guy that supposedly made it out alive first. So now we're talking about that they were bringing so-called Africans. Maybe you know? he converted to Islam to uh, to travel uh, across. Uh, Senegambia and reach Timbuktu because if you yeah you weren't there you were probably be killed but <laughs> maybe he pretend to be Muslim I I show you that at that time uh, if you were Christian and white mm -hmm. and so uh, because the Tubabu the white people we call in all over West Africa we call all the the white people Tubabu. Mm -hmm. uh, the Tubabu, uh, if they were converted to to Islam, maybe they could travel uh, uh, further yeah. into the continent. Yeah, but I understand that, but that's what I'm case, saying. You but if probably he looks, won't. But if he looks like this, he, I mean, I, <laughs> you know, he can't really disguise himself, even you know. So I understand why he had to do it. But my whole point is, this is this is they're whitewashing this. We gotta see. You gotta from what I'm learning. We you gotta prove. You gotta you, these drawings don't do nothing to me anymore, because I've caught them so many times lying. <laughs> I've caught them so many times showing us a white image of somebody who was of color and looked totally different. You know. So who's this guy they painted here, or, or how did they? And I know? heard about a story, and I was kind of shocked because it's a very official uh, radio in France and it's called Culture Radio and mm -hmm. it, it's a culture radio but it's a very uh, official um, radio uh, very consensual you know it's yeah. uh, so it's 
So if, only if consensus. If it's this only was consensus, but they mentioned the blackness of the man of the iron mask. You know, uh -huh. there is a story that uh, the king of France was very jealous of uh, uh, um, um, Fouquet, uh, Nicolas Fouquet, who built uh, a bigger uh, castle in his in his um, district than the king. So the king, when he visited <laughs> the castle of Nicolas Fouquet, was so jealous that he wanted to build Versailles. Mm -hmm. to do better you know so okay. he inspired himself of of uh, the chateau de la loire the castle of the la loire in france and especially the castle of nicolas fouquet to re to rebuild it better and it it is called now versailles and versailles this is the 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 the, the, the place of the king in paris okay. and um, Uh, where they build Versailles is very famous. It's like la, the, the, the White House in the United, in United States, you know, the, like in France, Versailles is very, very famous. It's the garden of the king. So, uh, and the residence of the king and the garden of the king. So you can understand that and why it is very important. Uh, oh, okay. And I was, um, I was... It, this particular guy, Nicolas Fouquet, was mentioned as a Uh, as as dark complexion and okay. uh, when i heard that in in that uh, on the radio cultural radio as I, i was estomached mm -hmm. i was uh, kind of shocked because i never heard about this before yeah so if so why why do you think all right so a lot of these uh When there's so when history when they're saying you know French this French guy came you know a lot of the times it was a person of, like you're saying of color complexion and we we are, we're always thinking like you know a white person because they just say French we just hear French in our head um, but like this French guy uh, so if he was the first European that got out there how did how would they have um, established themselves to be able to get millions of Africans right if they had never even had a colony established themselves yet until the 1800s. Can, I mean, what is the local legend there? You've been to uh, Senegal, right? Is that where you've been? And what other countries have you been? Yes, I've, I've been. I've been to Morocco uh -huh. uh, about eight eight times. I've okay. been to Mauritania. I, I crossed all Mauritania three okay. times, and I spent ten years in Senegal okay. in Senegambia. Okay, 10 years in Senegal and son. Wow. And what is like, do, do they have uh, stories of millions of their tribal men or hundreds or thousands of their tribal people being taken in ships? None of them. None Not of them. A single you guys heard memory. that, right? None of Not them. Not a single memory. None of them. And as a people raised in Caribbean, I was raised in the story of slave trade. It's a part of my story as a French Caribbean. And I went and I came to Senegal. I hoped that with the mythology of Gore Island, that the people would remind it. But none of them. When I explain to people, why do you think there is so much black people in Americas? And for them, it's not an argument they say oh, they, they can be black but not african that's why they say it to me mm -hmm. for them they have no memory of that because in senegal it's represent only five percent of the slave african slave trade so it's nothing but when you go to daume when you go to congo cameroon you find industrial captive uh, uh, factory of captives you know because if I explain to you the process how the the economy of the the, the Kanem the Sudan and the the Songhai uh, of Mali uh, was the central economy of Africa and 
when the uh, shipping of the uh, Jew of Portugal and Spain and Holland went to India and brought many goods along the, the, the African coast, the kings um, uh, along the coast, they, uh, they, they had an alliance, alliance, they alliance, they mm -hmm. alliance themselves with the European. And mm -hmm. when I say European, I don't mean white. Yeah. You know, when yeah. you say French at that time, there yeah. was no difference yeah. between the French of that comprehension or white or, or exactly. Tony, or they just say French. Mm -hmm. It's very, very late in the history that you are, you have a, it's appeared with the black code. Before the black code, you, you have not such a differentiation between uh, 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 the color of uh, of uh, of citizens i mean oh so uh, yes you can you can continue so i'm i'm showing people I mean, um, basically the uh, this is a washington post report i showed it in one of my videos gory island the door no return it was one of supposedly one of the biggest and most millions of africans went through that door and uh, it turned out that it was never a slave port it was a mansion false. it was false um, so it had nothing to do. Totally you know, false. They, they still did. I went two times yeah. on Gore Island. I visited all the islands. <laughs> so you've been there. So you can say so it's false. You've so been there. Yeah, I've, I've so been you, there. Yeah, so I, you're not, I, I, you're I not in your neighborhood. The so -called in a... no return door. The okay. so-called no return door. I enter it. I, I watch all the, and I study the, 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 the book of Jean-Luc Engrand who is from those family in Gore and yeah. he explained after uh, being studying uh, the, the, um, the certificate of birth, of death, of, uh, you know, uh, who own this, uh, who own that, on that island, who brought this, who brought that. And when you read the book, they say in a period of 150 years, there is only... 1,500 slaves that transited to Gore Island, and it is not in the in the the house that they show you, because that house we know today that that house was owned by a woman called Anna Pepin Colin, hmm. and that woman never possesses slaves, yeah, never, 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 never. She she buy slave in order uh, to to, uh, to for sabotage you know sabotage mm -hmm. you, you sabotage the word? it's a good word yeah. that you understand no yes, yes. Uh, yeah i understand what sabotage because they, is, yeah. yes they 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 brought the slave and they fixed a higher price so high price that no one could uh, uh, buy it, and they, those women, those wealthy women in Gore, they could not. They were a mix of Portuguese and the daughters of the Serer kings of the Salum in Africa. So they were mestiz, me, uh, like mixed people, like uh, descent from Jew, Portuguese Jew, and uh, uh, king of the Salum uh, in Senegal. So okay. uh, they were mixed people, but they are they were very wealthy. The senior, the so we got so we got we, we got no slave ships, right? We got we got no genealogy going back to Africa. We we know that these places that were supposedly uh, you know millions of people were leaving actually false. It wasn't real. Um, we know we studied uh, indentured servitude. We studied who was really coming over here, being persecuted, sent over here to the Americas, who was really being enslaved. Um, we, you, you actually mentioned that to me, um, about Angola, right? We know that the, uh, Portuguese and yes. Spaniards were enslaving many Indians, many Indians. Uh, we know that they were in Brazil first for many years before they started colonizing Angola. This is from part 14 of my video from indigenous American to African American, the transatlantic slave trade in reverse. 
And um, I was reading from this book, Africans and Native Americans from Jack Forbes. He did the whole research. He has great sources for what he's saying. Uh, anybody can go verify. Um, but he was letting us know in this part of the video. And uh, you're going to tell us a little bit about the Angola too, um, about the Bra Brazilians, what they, what part they had in, to do in Angola. Um, in this video, we were basically, uh, he was letting us know that Angola was colonized by Brazilians. Now, what type of Brazilians? That's what we have to look at individually, case by case. A lot of them, yes, are, are Indian, uh, mixed with Sephardic Jews and Moors, or just Indian, or just a straight up Sephardic Jew and Moor that was in Brazil. We know that they were there with the Dutch and all that. Uh, and they were getting kicked out. We got my video, Sephardic Jews, and we know the Huguenots, the Protestants, and all these people were in down there as well. Uh, so what was your take on Angola? So Angola actually nowadays is a Portuguese speaking country. And mm -hmm. Tome and the islands uh, who, uh, okay. which are so San Tome, right? San next Tome. to the, um, next the, to the island, of, yes, the San island Tome. of San Tome, it's... where we read uh, before, was one of the largest, and the, where they had started the sugar plantations mm. and many Sephardic. This Jews, place Moors. was a laboratory before yeah. to conquer the Indians of the America. You okay. have all you have all to know that mm. those places was the laboratory before, because they uh, they they built the first plantation. And uh, and sugar cane on uh, on that place, you know, and um, they raised um, slave uh, 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 sons and and daughters of captives born in the plantation, raised in the plantation, and they they call uh, those people criollo. Criollos, so, yeah. Criollo is a mm -hmm. word. Yeah, it's a word to say that you were born and raised in a plantation. Okay. That's the meaning of Criollo. Wow. So doesn't matter if you were the uh, owner, you, you lived are. there, or the servant, right? It just, just you yes, were associated. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yes, okay. yes. You, If you you were white or, or, or black, or yeah. if you were born and raised in the plantation, you are Criollo. Yep. So, so um, that makes sense. I that would makes sense. say that Criollo is a process. Yes, yes, it's a process of assimilation. It's a process of acculturation. Mm -hmm. But the laboratory was that they first um, made those plantation in accordance, and they agreed with the african king the elites and the elites saw that the the the, the european built uh, uh like a fortress and when they saw that the african king they um they brought they they they, they bought um uh, bricks from england and they built their own plantation in on the continent, on the coast. Okay. And they started to have their own slave. I can show you a place. Just Google Bimbia for me, please. Bimbia, yes. B-I-M-B-E-R-A. And you, you will see the, tra the, the traces uh, of, of an African uh, okay. master of plantation. So Bimbia is a needed slave. Bimbia. I... Bimbia is in Cameroon. Cameroon and Bimbia okay. is a four, 47 acres land mm -hmm. that are not all explored, but it was a plantation. And it is not possible in any way that the white people mm -hmm. invested. 47 acres on the continent i don't mean in a, on an island next to the river next to the shore not an island next to the shore on the continent 47 acres without the authorization of the of the african king without the authorization 
of the elites. Okay. It's, it's not possible. So you're saying that they had plantations there, um, but we're, they weren't they weren't yes. being managed by Europeans. These were their plantations. These were their their plantation. plantations. They needed yes. slaves for it. Mm -hmm. They needed slaves. These Africans needed slaves, free labor. And so you're saying that many of From the American place, Indians, many, many, the Portuguese brought many American Indians over there. Is that, that what you're saying? Sephardic Jews uh, from the Catholic Empire that were being kicked out. And that's why may, many, may, many of these people are claiming the, the Jewish ancestry from the Sephardic Jews and the Moors that were coming from Spain and Portugal. Do you have uh, stories of them? Yes, you, you see those ruins? Yeah. This is the ruins of plantation. When you study that place, you see there is pipes, big pipes, industrial pipes to, mm -hmm. to make a, a palm vine, pa palm wine and uh, uh, oil and all stuff like they do with with the, all the big companies in Africa yeah. now. Yep. You know, the big company so, in Africa now, they are related with the el elites of Africa. Yeah. And the elites of Africa they just eat the money of the people and they don't share it with with african because they invest their own money in in western world so the 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 well the the wealthy uh, uh um in africans of the elite they don't invest the money yeah. in africa they invest in western world so you don't see the fortune of the people in africa because all investment is in trust anonymous trust and when you look check out the the dates of the foundation of all companies of uh, uh of west indies the yeah. shipping company of west indies when you you check out all the dates it it just doesn't fit with the consensus story okay because they told you that the first african uh, was enslaved to america in the 15th century 14th century but it's not true because okay. at first african merchants invested their money because i told you the lab, the first laboratory of plantation were in africa before yeah. the colonization of um, the Americas. Yeah. so the first so the, the first plantation system i know you showed me you showed me pictures of how they were treating their their own people how they were enslaving their own people and they were whipping them and they were doing this kind I have, of uh, i don't know this this started so in africa engravings this started in africa before the americas before any of that concept or any of those ideas of whipping or anything like that plantation type slavery overworking people this was happening in africa right in 15 1400s even before the europeans way before is that correct it's it's is very correct and you see you have to see a country that called the the benin it's the ancient uh, kingdom of dahomey yeah but the benin it was like like the cameroon and the benin and congo was the major place of slavery because there was many merchant from those countries who went to Brazil mm -hmm. and Mexico. So at first, before to visit the merchants, Europe. We know who the merchants were. The, the African merchant, the, the African merchant went to the Americas. They saw slave. They ordered slave like a meal in the restaurant. Okay. And they shipped slaves. And you're talking about from North, Af North Africans? To those or, African or plantations. Okay. Hmm? When you're saying the and African after merchant, that, when who are you speaking about? Like North Africans or who are you speaking about? No, 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 no. I'm talking about African from uh, Congo, from uh -huh. Cameroon. Okay. From... Uh, uh, I'm talking about the Bamileke, for example. Let, if you want me to, to give you a lot of uh, name of tribes, I can give you. And uh, for example, so, uh, so when were they coming? Cameroon when were they coming? Bimbia, we, so 
the, so who, like, were, who like, were they coming with? They were coming the... at the with the with the the the, the Portuguese, the, the Portuguese, um, okay, the people from the Holland and Spain and Italians. Okay, okay. And, so uh, they were coming with that, the, the French Sephard- and the British. They were, they were coming the with French the Sephardic yes. Jews and the Muslim Moors that were being expelled from uh, At, Iberia. First, with Portuguese and uh, yes. Yes, because we know and, the Portuguese. Uh, you that's know a, that's the, a tag the during that time. Treaty of Tordesillas. <laughs> yeah. You know the Treaty of Tordesillas. Tordesillas. Tor Tordesillas. No, I don't. Uh, you should uh, uh, do uh, a research on it, and uh, you will find out that um, this, this treaty is to um, to to um, uh, to negotiate a limit where Spanish can colonize the the zones, the areas that a Spanish can colonize in America and to determine what is the limit uh, that the Portuguese are allowed to uh, uh, to uh, colonize. So um, when they heard about the... Um, and you know that uh, Christopher Columbus is not the, the first uh, sp- um, to, to arrive in the Americas, but because yeah. we know that the Portuguese f- uh, uh, arrived in Brazil before the Spanish. So yep. it, it's uh, it's well known. And yep. um, but um, uh, the the Treaty of Tordesillas. Well, we know uh, that's a future can, video. Uh, not know the Portuguese. That they were one of yes, yes. The Portuguese were actually, um, especially like um, people like Columbus and Vespucci, and then they they had access to um, what the Portuguese, the navigations they were taking, and they had already reached South America, you're right. And, um, you know, we're, that's a future video. We're going to talk about, um, what's his name, Salvador Fernandez Sarko soon. Don't worry. But what it's important to understand that the African merchant from Congo uh, uh, and... Uh, uh, Cameroon and uh, Benin, when they arrived in Brazil and mm-hmm. Mexico with the Portuguese and the Spanish and the Italians, and after that, the French and the British, but at first with the Portuguese and Spanish. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and when they, and after that, also uh, the, 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 the Jew of Holland. And the Jew of Holland, they conquered Suriname uh, near to the Guyanas, and they were kicked out from Brazil by the Portuguese. And the 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 the, the Jew yeah. of Holland needed just, to yeah, we, uh, we, to exile themselves in the Caribbean. So in Guadeloupe and Martinique, we welcome those uh, Jew from um, from from um, Holland. Who were kicked out from Brazil to uh, to the Caribbean because they knew the secret the secret to uh, uh, to purify to to purify the sugar because at yeah. first we did not know how to make the sugar pure yeah. to uh, you know to, to tra- transform it. Uh, well, well, that's that's what I'm purely. saying. Like we we, no we we recently went over all this information. A lot of the uh, parts of nations of the world, where we know that the people who really first started the sugar refineries and and, and all that were Sephardic Jews. They were the merchants. Now, when you're saying African, um, you know, I I agree. Maybe there was Africans in it, but this was all started and being funded. The ships and all these networks was with the Sephardic Jews of Spain. They were doing the sugar in the Madeiras in San Tomá. They were um, being sent there to work. And they were, because of their skills and knowledge, they were sent to Brazil. The Portuguese allowed them to live as free, you know, uh, crypto, you know, Muslims and Jews. And, you know, when you're saying that then the French came, then the Dutch came, we know these are tags. We know a lot of these people are the same people. A lot of these people were the French Huguenots were the same as Sephardic Jews and Moors. A lot of the Dutch were the Sephardic Jews. You know, we know that there was it was just a lot of tags going on, and it was more about people 
um, with their religious views and all that. So, you know, which I'm trying so to get a grasp for you. You see. can find you can find that um, Antonio the first of Congo, uh, the guy that you put on your miniature uh, on your uh, the first image of your of your video. But that's and what I'm saying. Two that's images. and I, I, I one we had to stop. Uh, no. Yes. Yeah, this one right here, right? Yes. So, so I, I've seen the, I've seen what they've said of him. I've seen that a lot of these French, uh, uh, European people, they're saying they're, they're Congo ambassadors, and I haven't seen the proof of that. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. This, this could be a, a straight up Portuguese. Yes, but I think, I think, I think that. For this particular case of Antonio Manuel Mvunde, Mvunda, this particular part, I think that he is really a Congo, but it's it's not a why is, generality. Why is, why is his name Antonio Manuel? Because I told you, when you study the Congo story, the first king in Africa who convert to Catholicism is Alfonso I. Alfonso I, uh, Alfonso uh, I is a, a, um, is a converted uh, uh, name because we know his name in Kikongo. But it was the Mani Congo, a powerful king in Congo, and he imposed this religion and he built churches in congo you can see uh, uh, churches from um, the 15th century mm -hmm. and uh, and it, it was the first and uh, nowadays congo is 80 million of people and there is only one percent of muslim so that means that congo is one of the most catholic and of a Christ, or, uh, almost Christian country in the world. So why, but why, okay, and, so um, now, so now that leads me to, to, is, to, to uh, want to study the Congo people themselves. So why are they so Catholic? I don't know, because <laughs> nowadays, the, 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 the Congo people said that they are the Bena Israel for real. They, okay, there that's is a what lot I'm, of uh, okay. sex, sect. In, in 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 Congo that say we are not African we are we are Hebrew Israelites we are not from here and I can okay. I can so even even Africans many okay okay well that's, I believe you that all the time I believe you so many so there's many Africans saying they ain't Africans themselves even in Africa and so they're trying to label people in a whole you know different why? continent because African. Bonampak everyone <laughs> know Bonampak everyone know Bonampak May, but in Africa, when I shared the information of the mu mural of Bonempak, a Congo girl just le le left a message in comment and say, ah, you know, when you say Bonempak, it's remind me in my language, the Kikongo, that Benampaka, that means the sons of the uncle, sons of the uncle. So Bonampak, when I said that to a Congo, he heard Benampaka, the sons of the uncle. And I noticed after that, that the nobility, the royalty of Congo, they were leopard, uh, leopard skins, fur, fur. fur. And uh, jaguar uh, skin for Bonampak people is for the nobility, and it's the very same. If you compare the leopard and the jaguar, it's yellow with with um, with with the black. Okay, so we know and, maize uh, is from America, right? We know maize is the same is from meaning. America. We know we know Maya the Maya and their whole uh, 
history and mythology we know the ancient mound peoples and their history and and we know about the origins of a lot of these people in America and, and they're, go, they're dating themselves to there. They're not saying they came from Africa or anything like that. So I see a reverse, like like in the title of this, of this video, uh, you know, a history in reverse. And when, when we're talking about the homie, I got a future video of how they relate to the Carib language, the homie, and, and to the Tupi and the South American tribes. And that's a whole big research, uh, shout out to Kiowa for doing that he's been linking that up a lot of these uh, african dialects with the south american languages